Hi, and welcome to this week's look at the major news stories so far. As usual, we'll do four videos. We're going to start off with the NASDAQ. Took a bit of a battering earlier this week. Um, second up, then we'll take a look at a couple of uh, major FX pairs, particularly the dollar. Uh, thirdly, we'll take a look at Brent crude and the fact that price has been declining for the last few days. And we'll finish up because, of course, it is earnings season. We'll finish up with a look at Google's results and what happened to Google. So, first up, the NASDAQ Composite had its worst session since late 2022. Now, as the chart shows, the US Tech 100 Mini, as we quote it at FX Open, it fell 2.62% in a single session. That's the largest drop since late 2022, with around 75% of the companies in red, i.e. on the slide. Now, Alphabet, that's the parent company of Google, was down 4.9% after the report. We'll come on to that a little bit more later. Tesla was down 12% due to a 7% decline in automotive revenue. Mr earnings and delays in its robo taxi setup and also the chip makers suffered now according to business insider renowned wall street investor ed yardini believes that major market players started exiting tech stocks back on july the 11th and it's basically the, the the reason for that is a rotation into stocks which are sensitive to anticipated interest rate cuts off the back of those last low inflation figures and he's also saying that the stock market is overbought and undergoing a minor correction well, let's take a further look at the chart see what else it shows us well we can see here the price has been in an upward trend in 2024 you see that in blue but made a bearish reversal from the upper boundary in mid-july now this week it aggressively moved down with wide bearish candles into the lower half of that ascending channel now the lower boundary of that channel and the support level at 18920 which was sort of in place since the beginning of june form a block that bulls are pinning their hopes on if the market is indeed experiencing a minor sell-off to move out of its overbought state this support block might act as a break and slow down the pace of the price decline that we've observed so far this week so not been a cracking start um, to the week keep your eyes and ears open and it's going to be very important particularly as we're in earnings seasons and we can get some quite large moves to not forget your risk management techniques okay secondly we're going to delve into the the foreign exchange markets a little bit specifically the euro dollar and the dollar swiss franc so the euro dollar has trimmed its gains whilst the us dollar against the swiss franc regains its strength main takeaway points if you like is the euro struggled to clear the one spot 0950 resistance level and subsequently fell versus the us dollar and the key bearish trend line is forming with resistance of one spot 0870 on the hourly chart now for the dollar swiss franc the major sort of couple of points with it was showing positive signs above the 0 0.8900 resistance zone and there's a major bullish trend line forming with support and around 0 0.8910 well, let's just delve in a little bit take a look at the euro dollar the pair declined below the 1 spot 875 support level and the 50 hour simplified moving average finally with the pair testing the 1 spot 0840 level the low forming around 1.0841 and the pair now consolidating its losses showing bearish signs that that may cap upsides now immediate resistance on the upside is near the 23.6 percent fibonacci retracement that's around the 1 spot 0855 level then we've got one spot zero eight seven zero or that 50 hour SMA. Now, an upside break above 1.0870 might see the pair head up towards 1.09, the figure, and immediate downside support is near that 1.0840 level. Then we could see that drop off to 1.0810, then down to 1.0765. Now, if we focus on the dollar Swiss franc chart, that shows us it's climbed above that 0 0.8870 resistance zone. Now, bulls are able to pump the pair back above the 50 hour simplified moving average and the 0 0.8900 level with a high near 0 0.8 923 that's testing the major bullish trend line with support at 0 0.8910 upside resistance we could find that near 0 0.8925 then 0 0.8940 and after that if we get that far 
0 0.8950. On the downside, we might well test that 23.6 Fibonacci retracement around the 0 0.8900 level. And we've got the first sign of major support near the 50% Fibonacci retracement. That's around 0 0.8870. A uh, break past there may spark some bearish moves. Some major support perhaps then at 0.8845 pivot level. Then it could head down towards the 0 0.8850. Two zero level. So, of course, inflation figures, other aspects are really important to keep your eye on. Okay, now look at the commodity markets. One of our favourites, Brent crude oil, and the price has been declining recently. Now, back on the 8th of July, in an article on our website, we noticed that the oil prices were forming a large narrowing triangle originating from sort of 2022-2023 with the upper boundary being significant resistance. Now the chart shows that the bulls have since failed to overcome that $87 resistance for Brent crude and since then, since they tried, the price has turned downwards breaking that blue upward trend line and it breached the support at $84 per barrel and forming a descending channel which we can see in red. So why is that? Well, the sentiment's been driven by a couple of things really and that's mainly the news of increased oil inventories. Obviously, increased inventories, potential for the need for less supply, but also, and um, we can't ignore the geopolitical tensions. There seems to be a reduction perhaps in tensions in the Middle East. In fact, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu stated that an agreement with Hamas on the hostage release is, and to quote, maturing which in that sort of conflict is, is quite a positive statement. So what next? Well, the chart indicates the price is at the lower boundary of the red descending channel, and that may well provide some support in the short term. The accelerated decline since last Friday, like Friday of last week, has caused a loss of more than 4%, and perhaps that may drive the bears into profit-taking territory. In the short term, a bullish correction to the median line of the red channel is possible. And we are entering, well, in fact, in the middle of holiday season. That well could support demand for oil as we've seen historically. If we take a look at it longer term, well Reuters are reporting that Morgan Stanley analysts forecast says that although there's a clear deficit in the oil market as things stand, they expect equilibrium between supply and demand by the fourth quarter of this year and in fact there could be a surplus as we enter next year with a possible resulting fall in the price closer to $70 per barrel. That's obviously purely sort of technical analysis and looking at supply and demand. Don't forget those geopolitical concerns. So the news in terms of what's going on in the Middle East will be as important for oil prices as oil inventories normally are. Okay, I'm going to finish off this week with, as already mentioned, a look at one of the reports from earnings season that's come out, and that was Google or Alphabet, the parent company of Google. And their shares were actually down after the earnings report. Now, the report came out for Q2 and earnings per share were $1.89 against a forecast of $1.84.7. Gross revenue came in at $84.742 billion US dollars against a forecast of $84.208 billion. So those headline figures were actually above expectation. But pre-market Wednesday, the report came out post-market Tuesday, the shares were down and by approximately $5 at one point. And the finger for that really was being pointed at the fact that investors weren't particularly happy with the YouTube advertising sales growth. That actually fell short of expectations coming in at 8.7 billion US dollars with an expectation of 8.9 billion US dollars. So post report, what does the chart show us? Well, in 2024, we've been in an upward channel that started back in 2023. The historic high earlier in July marked the upper boundary of that trend and in fact has acted as a resistance turning the price downwards. The bullish impulse which you can see in black lines is losing strength as the price moved towards the median line of the blue channel. And if we take a look at the July structure of the local extremes A to B to C to D to E that you can see on the chart that indicates a bearish sentiment as each increase is approximately 50% of the preceding decline. Is it all bad news? Well, not really. 39 analysts surveyed by tip ranks have provided positive forecasts. Of those 39, we have 33 buy recommendations and zero sell recommendations. In fact, the forecast of the price 12 months from now 
is $203.97. That's up 12.2% from the Tuesday close. It is, of course, possible those forecasts may worsen if the blue median line is broken by the bears. We're not sure what's going to happen, as is the case with most markets. Nobody has complete certainty, but certainly one to keep your eye on. So headline figures above expectations, but sometimes we have to drill down and look at what investors are actually focusing on below that impact figure. We wish you luck with your trading the week ahead. Bye for now.